Hello, I am picking up where I left off for the chapter two, part two notes. And so I ended talking about the concepts of combustion reactions, as well as the dangerous air pollutants and how they form. We talked about how um, combustion reactions involve hydrocarbon compounds. However, they also involve compounds that have a high carbon content like coal. Now, there are many different types of coal, such as anthracite coal, um, bituminous coal being the more popular type of coal to be used for the production of heat energy and therefore to use to convert the heat energy into electricity in our coal powered uh, electrical plants. And so bituminous coal has this general formula. And you can see that it has more than 50% of its atomic percentage as carbon. And so when you combust coal, the carbon in the coal is reacting with the oxygen in the air to produce CO2. Now note that there's also nitrogen and sulfur in coal. So the nitrogen in the coal can also react with oxygen to produce nitrogen oxide air pollutants. The sulfur in the coal can also react with oxygen in the air and produce sulfur dioxide, which is also an air pollutant. So we talked about balancing combustion reactions and the rule for balancing combustion reactions. And I ended the part, the first part of the recording, looking at two different possible models for how sulfur dioxide, SO2, forms. And of course, again, one of the sources of the sulfur that makes the air pollutant SO2 is the burning of coal. Coal contains a small percentage of sulfur. Now, sulfur and oxygen do not exist in nature as single atoms, like in Model B. So Model B shows single yellow spheres representing single atoms of sulfur. The red spheres represent single atoms of oxygen. So Model B is not a good model because sulfur and oxygen do not exist in nature as single atoms. So shown here as single atoms or what's called elemental form is an incorrect representation of oxygen and sulfur in the atmosphere. Model A is a correct model. Oxygen exists in nature as two oxygen atoms in a molecular or covalent chemical bond to form O2. So O2 is called a molecular element because it exists as two oxygen atoms bound together, but it's still considered an element because you've got two of the same type of atom, atoms bonded together. Same thing with sulfur. It doesn't exist in nature as a single sulfur atom, but actually eight sulfur atoms chemically bonded together. And so model A's balanced equation with S8 reacting with O2, producing SO2, the air pollutant, and then there are going to be some sulfur atoms left over. And so there's the balanced equation. With model B, there's no way that you can balance the equation. It remains an unbalanced equation, and therefore this is not a good model for the formation of SO2. Model A is the correct model for how SO2 forms.
And so take a look at part B of modeling sulfur dioxide formation. And so we want to predict the products, either SO2 or SO3, that are formed from the reactants in picture A. And so draw a picture of the products, including correct quantities. And so taking a look, we've pretty much already answered the question. So if SO2 is the product, that would be our balanced equation. Now, SO3 is also an air pollutant. And so if SO3 is a possible product, you also form some SO2 as well. And so we notice here in the second reaction involving SO3 as a product, that this reaction is also balanced. We have two plus one plus five equaling eight sulfur atoms on the right, and we've got eight sulfur atoms on the left. We've got eight oxygens on the left, and also two times three, six, plus two equal eight. So we have eight oxygen atoms on the right as well. So this is also a balanced chemical reaction that shows SO3 as well as SO2 formation. And so part C, would all of the oxygen atoms react completely with all of the sulfur atoms in the second equation in which SO3 is a product? The answer is yes. All of the oxygen atoms reacted completely. If they would have asked, did all of the sulfur atoms react completely with all the oxygen atoms? And the answer to that question in both cases is no. You're going to have some sulfur atoms, some free sulfur atoms in elemental form that are also a product because they're left over. So in this case, we can say yes, no elemental oxygen. product. We do have elemental sulfur as a product. So therefore oxygen, because it gets used up, oxygen is the limiting. reactant and sulfur is the excess
reactant. And the last part of our modeling SO2 formation, true or false, after the reaction goes to completion, unreacted sulfur atoms are left over, and then that's true. And we just discussed that. Because we have sulfur as a product in elemental form as free sulfur atoms, not chemically bonded to anything. And so now we've got some practice problems. And these practice problems will give us an opportunity to use our balancing chemical equation skills. And so when you balance your chemical equations, you analyze the atoms on each side and make sure that there is an equal number of each type of atom on each side of the arrow. So we've got two hydrogens on the left, two hydrogens on the right. We've got two oxygens on the left, but only one oxygen on the right. So therefore we need two oxygens on the right. So to get two oxygens on the right, we put a number two coefficient in front of the product water. But in putting that two, in, two coefficient in front of water, now we have four oxygen, I'm sorry, four hydrogen atoms on the right, but only still two on the left. So now we've got to put a two coefficient in front of the hydrogen on the left in order to get four hydrogen atoms on both sides. So now we have our balanced equation. The next one, we use this similar tactic. We've got two nitrogens on the left, but only one on the right. So we'll put a two coefficient in front of the NO2 now we have two nitrogens on both sides. Putting a two in front of the NO2 increased us from two oxygens to four. So now we've got to put a two in front of the O2 on the left in order to have four oxygens on the left. So now we have our balanced equation. The next one, N2 plus O2, you have the same reactants, but you've got a different product nitrogen monoxide. And so we've got one nitrogen and one oxygen on the right, two oxygens and two nitrogens on the left. So therefore to balance, we put a two coefficient in front of the NO. Now we've got two nitrogens on the right, two oxygens on the right, that balances the two nitrogens and two oxygens on the left. This is uh, part D reactions, a very popular reaction that's done industrially to produce ammonia, which is used in things such as fertilizers. So you've got N2 plus H2. They are reacted together to produce ammonia, NH3. So we've got only one nitrogen on the right and three hydrogens. On the left, we've got two nitrogens and two hydrogens. So first, we'll balance the nitrogens by putting a two coefficient in front of ammonia. So now we've got two times one, two nitrogens on the right, and then two times three, six hydrogens on the right. So now my nitrogens are balanced, but my hydrogens are not because I only have two hydrogens on the left. So to get six hydrogens on the left, 
I'll put a number three coefficient in front of the hydrogen to give me six hydrogens on the left. Now our equation is balanced. The next one, SO3 formation. So we've got one sulfur on the left and one sulfur on the right. We've got two oxygens on the left, but three on the right. And so when you have a situation where you've got this two, three situation, we need to think in terms of least common multiple. And so the least common multiple between two and three is six. And so therefore we're gonna have to have six oxygens on each side in order to balance the equation. So to get six oxygens, we simply put a three coefficient in front of O2. To get six oxygens on the right, we've got to put a two coefficient in front of the SO3. So now we've got six oxygens, two times three on the right, and then three times two, six oxygens on the left. But in putting the two coefficient in front of the SO3, now we have two sulfurs on the right and only one sulfur on the left. So to remedy that, we put a two coefficient in front of that sulfur atom on the left. Part F, you have nitrogen monoxide, NO, reacting with oxygen, O2, to produce NO2. So I've got one nitrogen on the left, one, ox one nitrogen on the right. I have a total of one plus two equal three oxygens on the left, but I only have two on the right. And also what's different in reaction F versus C is that on the left-hand side of the equation, I've got oxygen present in two different compounds or elemental forms. I've got oxygen as a part of NO, and then I've got elemental oxygen as O2. So in balancing the oxygens, if I put a two coefficient in front of the NO, now I've got two nitrogens on the left. So I'm going to put another two coefficient in front of the NO2 product to give me two nitrogens on the right. And in putting a two coefficient in both places, now I've also balanced my oxygens. I've got two times one, which is two, plus another two, giving me a total of four oxygens on the left. And then on the right, I've got two times two equals four oxygens on the right. So now not only did I balance my oxygens, I also maintained my nitrogen balance. Question two is just combustion reactions to balance. And remember our rule for balancing combustion reactions, balance the carbons first, then the hydrogens, then the oxygens. Because the cool thing with the combustion reactions, all you see are carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens in the formulas. And therefore in the chemical reactions, those are the only three atoms involved. Whereas with question one, we had a variety of different types of uh, chemical reactions. But in question two, it's just combustion reactions. And so for part A, and another thing I want to mention about combustion reactions. So if you're dealing with combustion reactions, if there are an even number of carbon atoms in the hydrocarbon,
then you are going to need to use a fraction or decimal, whichever you prefer. to balance the oxygen atoms. And that's usually on the reactant or the left side of the equation. So if there are an even number of carbon atoms in the hydrocarbon compound reactant, then you're going to need to use a fraction or a decimal, whichever you prefer, to balance the oxygens on the left hand side of the equation. So that's the case for A, C, and possibly D and E. Because in each of those, the hydrocarbon compound has an even number of carbon atoms. So again, we follow our rules. We'll balance the carbons first. Since we've got four on the left, we put a four coefficient in front of CO2 on the right in order to get four carbons on the right. Next, we balance our hydrogens. We've got 10 on the left. We only have two on the right, so we'll put a five coefficient in front of the water to give us 10 hydrogens on the right. Now let's balance the oxygens. We've got four times two, which is eight oxygens provided by the CO2 molecules, but we can't forget about the water. We've got five water molecules, so therefore we've got five additional oxygen atoms as a part of those five water molecules. Five times one gives us five. So five plus eight is 13. So we've got 13 oxygens on the right. But we only have two on the left. And so therefore, in order to get 13 oxygens on the left, we have to use the fraction 13 over two, or if we prefer, we can put it in decimal form, 13 halves is six and a half. So now we have a balanced chemical reaction. Therefore, needing a fraction to balance the oxygens whenever you have an even number of carbons as a part of your hydrocarbon. Part B, you've got C3H8. Part A was C4H10. This hydrocarbon, by the way, C4H10 is butane. That's the hydrocarbon fuel that's found in things like your little uh, strikers that you use to light your fireplace or your gas grill, uh, cigarette lighters, they all contain butane. Part B, C3, H8, this is propane. And so again, we balance the carbons first. Three on the left, now we've got three on the right. Next to hydrogens, we've got eight on the left. So we need to put a four coefficient in front of water to get eight hydrogens on the right. And then last, we balance the oxygens. On the right, we've got three times two, which is six, provided by the three carbon dioxides. And then you can't forget about the water molecules. You got four times one, which is four. So four plus six being 10. So to get 10 on the left, we simply put a five 
coefficient in front of the oxygen, giving us 10 oxygen atoms on the left. Part C, you've got an even number of carbon atoms, so we may perhaps need, of course, a fraction in order to balance. And so we follow our rules again, balance the carbons first. We got two on the left. We need two on the right. Hydrogens, we've got six on the left. We need six on the right. And then now, finally, the oxygens. On the right, we've got two times two, four, plus three times one, three. So four plus three is seven. So to balance and get seven oxygens on the left, we use a fraction seven over two. We got seven over two. Remember your math, how to multiply fractions. You should have learned that somewhere down the line, way back when. And I need to disclose this because I've had issues with this in the past. I don't, I know that if you've taken math classes K through 12 in America, you've learned how to multiply fractions. You may have forgotten how to do it, but you learned it somewhere down the line and you just need to recall that information, okay? Um, I've had students in the past get offended when I say things like, remember when you learned this? If you went to a K through 12 school in America, I know for a fact that you know how, you should know how to multiply fractions. You just need to remember. So seven halves times two is 14 over two, which is seven. So we have seven oxygens on the left. Part D, we've got that same even number hydrocarbon. And this is, by the way, ethane, C2H6. But this time, versus C, in which you're having complete combustion. With CO2 as a product. In D, carbon monoxide is the product, not carbon dioxide. So that lets us know that this is incomplete combustion. So whenever you have a combustion reaction, carbon monoxide is your product instead of carbon dioxide, then you have incomplete combustion. So we still balance it like we normally would. Balance the carbons first, then the hydrogens, and then last, the oxygens. So I've got two oxygens provided by the two CO molecules. And then again, don't forget about the waters. You've got three times one, which is three. So total oxygens on the right, three plus two, five. And therefore to get five on the left, you use a fraction, five halves. The next one, E, is also ethane again, but this time you have also incomplete combustion. Because you don't have CO2 or CO as a product, you just simply have carbon as a product. And so we still follow the same balancing rules. Balance the carbons first, then the hydrogens. And now we've got to balance the oxygens. Well, we don't have any oxygens in the first product. It's just carbon. And so our water provides the, high, the oxygens for us on the right. And so there are three oxygens on the right, and we need three oxygen atoms on the left. And so we put a fraction, three halves, in front of the oxygen on the left that gives us three oxygens on the left. 
And then finally, part F is seven carbons. So we're not going to need to use a fraction to balance the oxygens because we got an odd number of carbons. This hydrocarbon is called heptane. Heptane is used for a variety of purposes. One place where you can find it is in your gasoline. Uh, it makes up uh, a very, very small percentage of your gasoline. For example, if you are using gasoline that has a certain octane rating, that octane rating tells you how much octane is in your gasoline. The rest of the components of the gasoline can be a variety of things, and one of those things is heptane. And so we balance the carbons. We need seven on the right because we've got seven on the left. Our hydrogens, we've got 16 on the left, so we need 16, eight times two, giving us 16 on the right. And so finally, let's balance the oxygens. Seven times two is 14. 14 plus eight times one. That gives us a total of 22. Oxygens on the right. So to get 22 on the left, we put an 11 in front of the oxygen. 11 times 2, giving us 22. And that brings me to the end of the second recording for chapter two notes, part two. I hope you had a great weekend, and I will see you in class on Monday.